Hello, my name is Joachim Suter. I'm the founder of the Academy of Empathic Studies. And today I would like to talk to you about um, complete decongestive therapy or CDT, its components and how this therapy is actually applied in the treatment and management of lymphedema, which is an accumulation of protein rich fluid affecting most often the extremities. Now, although lymphedema at this point is not a curable condition, its uh, symptoms and progression may be mitigated by uh, appropriate treatment and management. While I'm sure that most of you listening have a clear understanding of lymphedema, I would, I would like to do a quick review of the lymphatic system and go through the types and symptoms of lymphedema. The lymphatic system itself is closely associated with the blood circulatory system and consists of lymph vessels and lymph nodes throughout the body. Lymph vessels uh, collect lymph fluid, which is composed of protein, uh, water, fat and uh, waste products from cells. These vessels transport the lymph fluid uh, to lymph nodes where waste products and foreign materials are filtered out from the fluid. After passing several groups of uh, lymph nodes, the lymph vessels return the fluid back to the blood. Now, when these uh, lymph vessels are damaged, the flow of lymphatic fluid is compromised, which can lead to the onset of swelling, which is known as lymphedema. Now, there are different types of lymphedema. Depending on the etiology, lymphedema can be classified as either primary or secondary. The formation of primary lymphedema is caused by pathologies affecting the lymphatic system directly in form of a developmental abnormality, which can negatively affect the absorption of lymph fluid. The age of the patient at the time of onset of the swelling is the determining factor when it comes to the classification of primary lymphedema. Primary lymphedema can be classified as congenital or pediatric lymphedema, which is present at birth or within the first two years of life and accounts to about 10 to 25% of all cases of primary lymphedema. The most common form of primary lymphedema is lymphedema precox or makes disease. Uh, by definition, lymphedema precox becomes clinically evident after birth and before the age of 35. This condition accounts for 65 to 80 percent of all cases of primary lymphedema and uh, most often arises during puberty or pregnancy. Typical for primary lymphedema is that uh, most often the lower extremities are affected. Now, much more common than the primary type is secondary lymphedema. Secondary lymphedema results from a mechanical disruption or obstruction of normally functioning lymph vessels or lymph nodes and may be present in the extremities, uh, the trunk, the abdomen, the head and neck, or the exterior genitalia. In the United States, the highest incidence of secondary lymphedema is observed following surgery and radiation for malignancies. The overall cancer treatment-related incidence rate of secondary lymphedema is about 15%, uh, with breast cancer treatment-related uh, lymphedema having the highest rate of occurrence at about 42%. Any type of surgery, specifically procedures that require the removal of lymph nodes, can cause the onset of lymphedema, secondary lymphedema in this case. Surgical cancer procedures such as uh, lumpectomies or uh, mastectomies in breast cancer or surgery for genital urinary cancers commonly include the removal or dissection of lymph nodes with subsequent damage to uh, lymph vessels, which can lead to the onset of secondary lymphedema. Now, what are the treatment options for lymphedema? The standard treatment for lymphedema is complete decongestive therapy, or CDT, which is often labeled as the gold standard uh, therapy for the treatment and management of primary and secondary lymphedema. 
CDT is listed on the websites of the American Cancer Society, the National Cancer Institute, and the International Society of Lymphology as the main component in the treatment and management of primary and secondary lymphedema and shows excellent long-term results if uh, it's applied correctly by a skilled and certified lymphedema therapist. In suitable cases, a complete decongestive therapy may be combined with uh, newer generation intermittent compression pumps or IPCs. These newer IPCs are labeled type 3 pumps, which are advanced segmented devices that can deliver an individual determined pressure to each compartment of the unit. However, it is important to understand that IPC should never be used as a standalone treatment for lymphedema. They should only be used in, in combination with complete decongestive therapy. The goal of any treatment is to reduce the swelling and to maintain the reduction, that is to bring the lymphedema back to a normal or near normal size and to limit the risk of infection. In order to reduce the swelling, it is necessary to reroute uh, the lymph flow to include uh, excess water and protein molecules around the blocked areas into more centrally located healthy lymph vessels. This goal is achieved by a combination of different treatment modalities, all of which are components of a treatment system, which is known as complete decongestive therapy or CDT. So CDT is a multi-component treatment system, which includes manual lymph drainage, compression therapy, exercises, and skin and nail care. Uh, let me explain those components briefly. Manual lymph drainage or MLD is a soft and gentle manual manipulation of uh, the tissues and uh, superficial lymphatic structures designed to increase the activity of functioning lymph vessels. The specific techniques used in MLD are also effective in rerouting the lymph flow in lymphedema around the blocked or damaged areas into more centrally located healthy lymph vessels. So, MLD assists in moving protein-rich fluid from the affected body part into areas with a functioning healthy lymphatic system. Now, in order to prevent the reaccumulation of fluid following the MLD treatment, compression to the affected body part needs to be applied. Secondary, secondary to the swelling associated with lymphedema, the elastic fibers in the tissues are damaged and the physiological skin elasticity may never be regained completely. As a result, the affected body part is always at risk for reaccumulation of fluid. External support of the body part affected by lymphedema is therefore an essential component of lymphedema management. In fact, without the benefits provided by compression therapy, successful treatment and management of lymphedema would be impossible. Based on the phase of the treatment, which I will be covering uh, shortly, compression therapy is applied either by um, multi-layered special bandage materials, so-called short stretch bandages, or by compression garments. So we covered MLD and compression. The third component of CDT are decongestive exercises which are tailored to the specific uh, needs of the patient and complement the decongestive effects achieved by MLD and compression therapy. The main goal of these exercises is to maintain and improve the results achieved by decongestion. As I mentioned, exercises are tailored to each individual patient and may uh, contain a combination of remedial exercises uh, aerobic or resistive exercises or stretching exercises. Other beneficial exercises uh, include uh, water or aquatic exercises or yoga. Part of this program are also breathing exercises which are of particular importance for those uh, individuals affected by uh, lower extremity lymphedema. 
uh, the movement of the diaphragm in breathing exercises combined with the inward and outward movement of the ribcage and uh, the lower back promotes lymphatic return in the large lymph vessels located in the abdominal area. The final component of CDT to cover is skin and nail care. Patients affected by lymphedema are susceptible to infections of the skin and nails. Meticulous care of these areas, uh, of these areas the skin and nails, is essential to the success of CDT. The skin is usually impermeable to bacteria and other pathogens, but any defect in the skin, whether from trauma, heat or other causes, can serve as an entry site for uh, infectious agents. Lymphedemous tissues are also saturated with uh, protein-rich fluid, which serves as an ideal um, uh, breeding ground for pathogens. Now, CDT itself is uh, performed in two phases. In phase one, which is also known as the intensive or decongestive phase, treatments are administered ideally on a daily basis by a trained or certified uh, by a trained and certified lymphedema therapist or CLT. Um, and those treatments are applied until the extremity is decongested. Now, the average duration of an individual treatment session is about 45 to 60 minutes, which should ideally include all components of CDT. Uh, the duration of the entire intensive phase varies with the severity of the condition and averages two to three weeks for patients affected by lymphedema of the arm and two to four weeks uh, for patients with uh, lower extremity lymphedema. In extreme cases, the intensive or decongestive phase may last up to six to eight weeks and may have to be um, uh, um, repeated uh, several times. Now, this is for severe cases only. The end of the first phase of CDT is determined by uh, the results of measurements on the affected body part, which are taken by the therapist. Uh, these measurements may be taken with a tape measure or specific devices uh, such as pyrometers. Once those measurements uh, reach a plateau, the end of phase one is reached and the patient progresses seamlessly into phase two of CDT, which is also known as the self-management phase. Phase two is an ongoing and uh, individualized part of CDT in which the patient assumes responsibility for maintaining and improving the treatment uh, results that were achieved in phase one. During the intensive phase, the patients uh, are instructed by the therapists in the individual components of self-management, which include uh, skin care, regimen, home care, uh, home exercises, uh, self-management drainage, and uh, application of compression garments for daytime use. In some cases, it may be necessary for the patient to apply padded uh, compression vanishes for nighttime use, or the therapist may recommend alternative compression materials, which are typically uh, adjustable devices, uh, with, uh, which work with uh, Velcro hook and loop system. Regular Checkups with uh, the lymphedema therapist and the physician are certainly necessary during phase two of uh, CDT. So much for uh, complete decongestive therapy or CDT, its components and treatment phases. I would like to conclude with the remark then in order for CDT to be effective, it is of utmost importance that uh, therapy components, uh, treatment components of CDT are applied correctly by a certified lymphedema therapist or CLT. CLTs undergo a 135 hour training course in a school which meets uh, the uh, requirements set by the Lymphology Association of North America or LANA for the training and certification of lymphedema therapists. 
You can find out more uh, on this topic um, on Lymphedema blog, which is a website dedicated to provide free and up-to-date information uh, to individuals affected by lymphedema or individuals affected by uh, other forms of swelling. Just log on to www.lymphedemablog.com and click on uh, any article that may be of interest to you on the index which is located on the left side of the web page.